Hey all you Kristen Mama Fix It fans. I wanted to come to you guys and do a cooking video because I realized I promised you guys originally that I would show you all kinds of fun things, how to fix cars, how to, you know, do fancy folds on towels, how to do all kinds of stuff. And I realized I promised you guys cooking and we haven't done one yet. So, um, we're going to do one today. And since the holidays are coming up, one of my favorite recipes to make at the holidays is oatmeal raisin cookies. And I make them from scratch. Um, I have taken several different recipes over the years, kind of concocted them all together. And then, um, I added a, a secret ingredient of my own. So, um, I'm going to share that with you guys and it is super simple. So the first step is you go over to your oven and you're going to turn it to bake and 350 degrees. So you're gonna get that nice and preheated. I also line my cookie sheets with foil um, because I have two boys and I don't have time for extra cleaning. So I line it with foil. I went ahead and sprayed it down with some cooking spray so the cookies don't stick to it. Um, and then I measure out all of my ingredients ahead of time and put them in individual bowls so it makes everything much easier and um, simpler to do. So this recipe calls for one and a half cups of flour. I don't have it memorized, sorry. <laughs> it calls for one teaspoon of baking soda, um, two and three quarters cups of oats, one and a quarter teaspoons of cinnamon, two sticks of butter, and I use the short sticks. They're fatter um, and shorter, but they're the same as a regular skinny stick. Um, and I like the salted butter because it tends to give it a little bit nicer of a flavor. Um, three quarters of a cup, three quarters of a cup of brown sugar, one quarter cup regular sugar, white granulated sugar, um, one teaspoon vanilla, one tablespoon of molasses, two large eggs, and one cup of raisins. Now you can go a little more or a little less based on what you like. For the raisins and then my secret ingredient is one of these little tubs of this cinnamon applesauce it makes them really moist and delicious and they're going to come out really good because sometimes oatmeal raisin cookies can dry out based on the oats that you use i tend to use the old-fashioned oats um, that are not the instant they're not the one minute ones um, just the regular so once you've got all that prepared and separated out then you're going to mix your flour, your salt, and your baking soda, which I put the two of those together. And you are going to mix your cinnamon. And then you are also going to put your oats in this bowl. Now, it's not gonna fit in my little bowl, so I'll put it in the bowl with the oats. And then you are just going to want to get a spoon and stir that together. So, get one of my spoons out. And you're just kind of going to mix that in really nicely so that all the oats um, are coated with the flour and the, sh and the cinnamon and um, baking soda. So it's all good and stirred in. But this is also going to get mixed in once you cream your butter and your sugar. So, don't worry if it's not... 100% mixed in your bowl, it will, it will get, get there. Then we are going to take our two sticks of butter and I have my KitchenAid mixer here. And you are just going to take these out. They do not have to be room temperature. So you can do these at whatever temperature you know, I just pull them right out of the fridge, let them sit while I'm mixing all my other ingredients. Um, so they're not really room temperature, but they're not super cold either. You stick those in, and then you're going to take your sugar, and I've already mixed the brown sugar and the regular. So you just pour it right in there. And we're gonna turn this on. You will not be able to hear me, but we're going to cream this. And I will show you what it looks like when, once it is creamed. So. It takes a few minutes, so be patient. Cooking is not fast. It is an art cook. If it gets stuck, you 
simply grab a spoon or a fork you plop it out of your mixer because you want to make sure it all gets nice and blended together and then we just squish it and start it again Takes a little while. This is not a fast thing. And actually, um, people have asked me where I learned to cook. It's super fun. My mom was a home economics teacher, and my grandmother owned a bakery. And so I just fell in love with cooking at a young age. And so this is one of the fun things I like to do. Um, and I'm trying to teach my boys to appreciate it. Alright, we are almost done here. Speed that up just a bit. Awesome. Now, I'm going to pull this over this way and show, ah, I'm sorry, show you guys. This is what it's going to look like once it is creamed, okay? It's going to be kind of almost like cookie dough, and it will be eventually once it gets everything in it. So we've got that creamed. Then the next step is to add the molasses and the vanilla, and you're going to mix that for one minute. Um, it's very thick, so you're going to need a spoon to get this out. The vanilla pours out very easily. The molasses, on the other hand, does not. So we are going to just kind of scrape that out of there. And I always put just a smidge over the one tablespoon on the molasses because a lot of it does stick to the sides of the bowl. So you're going to want to make sure you have a little bit extra so that you're not you're truly getting that full one tablespoon. And once you've got that in there. Then we'll set that to the side and we're going to mix this up for one minute. So while you're waiting, you can continue stirring your oats and your flour concoction. You're going to want to open your oatmeal and make sure that, it, I mean your, your oatmeal. Uh, your applesauce and make sure that it is ready to go. Now you're going to want to mix this in probably here in just about 30 seconds once that is fully um, blended because all your wet ingredients are going to go first. And it's been about 35 seconds so I'm going to turn that, put my applesauce in. Now this doesn't really affect the flavor. It's going to affect the texture more than anything and make it super moist and um, delicious. That way they're um, they're just really fluffy and light and they're not that, you know, sometimes oatmeal raisin cookies get a little bit hard. So this does not do that. Do not try this if you've never done it before. But some of that gets, you have to be careful so you don't get it in the mixer. Um, get stuck up on the side. So I like to give that a good whirl. Okay, now that has been 60 seconds. So you can see what it's starting to look like now. Um, the next step is we are going to add the eggs and we are going to do it for another minute and the, the and then we'll do it for three minutes once you get both of them in there. So you do it a minute, then you do it another minute, and then you just make sure it's um, the consistency it needs to be. Since I'm using an actual mixer it does not take me as long one second I did not grab my spatula I need to have a spatula prepared and ready so you can actually scrape stuff off the sides because it does get stuck to the edge of your mixing bowl and you're going to want to make sure all that gets off the sides so you have your full recipe and uh, it is yummy and ready to go so we've got one egg in here and we're going to blend this and then we'll add the other one, okay? 
and it does go faster. It may not take you a full minute with each egg because you are using an electric mixer and the KitchenAid works a lot faster than a hand mixer and it definitely works a lot faster than doing it with a whisk by hand. egg in there. I don't recommend cracking over the bowl if you're not used to it because you will get shell in there. I've been doing this for many, many years, so I very rarely get eggshell in there. Cooked up really, really good. Now it's starting to look really moist and you're going to see that it is more like a liquid batter. Um, and then it's gonna, it's definitely going to firm up here in just a minute when we add the oats. So um, do not fret if it's a little too liquidy right now. That is what's giving it the moisture and those oats really absorb the moisture very, very quickly. So you're gonna wanna make sure it is nice and moist when you add all your, your wet ingredients. So next we are going to put the oats in and we're going to do this a little bit at a time. We are not going to add them very fast. And then I always stir in my raisins. I do not use the mixer because I don't like them getting all smushed and gross. So you don't put all of this in. You do a little bit at a time. I usually do it in four sessions. And it doesn't take long when you're mixing this stuff in. You kind of see that cloud of um, flour going, going there. And that's okay. That is totally normal. I'm going to stop it real quick. I'm going to scrape the excess off the sides. And you'll see how there's some powder in there. I'm scraping that off the sides. And I apologize if you guys hear background noise. I have two little boys. I've got some in-laws and a husband that are here. And so they, um, they're they not always, you know, I don't always have a quiet space to do things. I'm gonna put in the third section. And then the final section will be here in a minute. And you're just gonna wanna mix that in. When you notice the flour is not really on the sides anymore, that's when you know it's pretty well mixed. And there is the last of it. We're gonna mix that for just a minute. I'm gonna take my bowls to the sink. And turn it off. I'm gonna scrape, ah! turn it off. <laughs> scrape down the sides, and then it is almost ready to roll in the balls and put in the oven. So, once you've gotten all the excess off the sides, yeah, see this is a nice moist um, mixture. Unlike some of them, when they get to this stage, they're going to be very um, hard, and you know those are going to, when they cook, they're going to get kind of tough. Um, so if you like them a little more hard, and you want to be able to use them kind of like a stone, great, go that route. I like them moist, I want them to just melt in my mouth, and that's why I go and add the applesauce to make it a little more moist. Okay, so I'm going to get all of this excess off of the mixer. And then we are going to stir in the raisins. And then the next step will be to put it on the cookie sheets and bake them. While we bake them, I'm going to pause the video. Um, so the next thing you'll see once we get them in the oven, um, you'll it'll be a pause and then you'll see me pulling them out of the oven so I can show you guys how, um, how nicely they baked up. Okay, so I detach that. My mixer's loud, especially if you don't put, put the handle down correctly. And yes, I washed my hands beforehand. That is rule number one of cooking. Rule number two, you don't cook in a messy kitchen. It has to be clean before you start cooking. So here's my raisins. I like to overfill it because we like quite a few raisins in ours um, here in the Landon house. But you can make them however you want because remember, cooking is how you like it, not how everybody else likes it. And if you ask my boys, there are many, many times when I cook stuff that me and my husband or my in-laws or my parents, when they come to visit, um, like 
but my boys do not, or vice versa. If I cook stuff the kids like, uh, the adults don't always like it. So, um, but these oatmeal raisin cookies are one of the things everybody seems to love. Um, even people who tell me, oh, I'm not a big oatmeal raisin fan, they've tried the cookies and they absolutely love them. It's a simple recipe, it's very easy. Mixing and prepping takes you maybe 12 to 15 minutes. It would have gone a lot faster if I had not been trying to show you guys. Um, so, close the door, boys. See, my kids are running in and out of the house. Um, but yeah, if I hadn't been teaching you guys, it probably would have only taken about 10 minutes to mix this all together. So now you have your dough with the raisins in it. Um, and we are going to pull, move that out of the way, our cookie sheet over. And you can do this any way you want. Some people get a cookie scoop if they want it to be perfect. I just like to roll mine into little balls and they don't have to be the same size. I try to get them similar in size, about an inch, inch and a half. And I will typically do these in rows of, depending on my cookie sheet, I have a big one and, and I have smaller ones. Um, I will tend to do these rows of two and then in the center I will do like a, a five dot. So one here, one here, one here, one here, and then one in the middle so they don't bake together. That's just a little trick I learned. Um, if you make them smaller, you don't even have that problem. But I like big cookies. I want them to be fun and big and, um, you know, kids say the bigger the better. So, um, that is what we're doing. So here's my first batch. I am almost done. Again, they don't have to be perfect. If you want them to look perfect, um, Go visit Martha Stewart's page. I'm no Martha Stewart. I'm just Kristen, and I do things my way. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get a couple more on here, and then these will be ready to bake. All right, so I actually have nine on this cookie sheet because I make them a little bit bigger. So this is what they look like on the sheet, ah, on the sheet. I'm going to stick them in the oven um, for 10 minutes. And when we come back, we will have wonderful um, oatmeal raisin cookies for you guys to view. Okay, guys. So I'm back. It has been like 13 minutes. Um, I sometimes don't use the timer. I'm going to pull these out and show you how amazing they look. So this is the first batch that we stuck in, and they're huge, and they smell so good. I'm going to pause. I'm going to put them on a plate and show you guys. Hey, guys. I am back. I have taken them off, and yes, I am eating one. Um, this is what they will look, once they look like once they are plated. They are so moist. They are so delicious, and normally I would put them on a cooling rack and let them set for about five or 10 minutes, kind of harden up, and then I'd plate them. But um, I'm running out of room on my cabinet, so I needed uh, one tray of them to be gone because I have three trays. This, um, this particular recipe made, I wanna say, two dozen, um, and I make them big. So if you were to make them smaller, it would probably make a whole, whole lot more. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy my wonderfully moist, one, ah, wonderfully delicious cookie. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you do, please like it, comment if you have any questions, and definitely subscribe to my page and send your friends my way. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend, and I uh, look forward to posting another video soon. Bye, guys.